That October night in 1988 was chilly and wet, and rain was pelting against the windows of our little three-bedroom semi in Glendormley, just north of Belfast. It was late and I was in our bedroom, hurriedly trying to cram enough clothes into a suitcase for a few days for my husband, myself and our sons Adam, eight, and five-year-old Daniel. The boys were asleep in their bunk beds next door, blissfully unaware that their lives were about to be turned upside down for years to come. In the narrow street outside our house, its engine running, was an unmarked Royal Ulster Constabulary, RUC, police car, flanked on either side by armored police Land Rovers. Two armed officers stood guard. My husband Liam Clark, a senior journalist with the Sunday Times, was downstairs talking to RUC special branch officers. Less than an hour earlier, an anonymous caller had warned Liam he was the target of an IRA assassination attempt to take place the next day. Liam had immediately called the RUC, and now we had to leave. We didn't know it then, but it was our last night in our Belfast home. I closed the suitcase and woke our boys. They had been looking forward to the Halloween half-term break from school, even though we had recently returned from the holiday in Peru. They were confused and irritable at being woken, as I stuffed some of their favorite toys into backpacks. We're going to a hotel for an adventure for a few days, I told them. Like Peru, they asked me. Yes, like Peru, I lied. All this week I've been pondering the events of that night 33 years ago and the long shadow they cast over our lives. The trigger? The admission last weekend by Roy Greenslid, a former Fleet Street editor turned professor of journalism and specialist in media ethics, to boot, that he was in complete agreement about the right of the Irish people to engage in armed struggle. He had, he said, come to that position as early as January 1972 after British paratroopers shot dead 13 unarmed protesters during a civil rights march in Derry. Writing in the British Journalism Review, Greenslid added, I came to accept that the fight between the forces of the state and a group of insurgents was unequal and therefore could not be fought on conventional terms. In other words, I supported the use of physical force. Let's not mince our words here. Greenslid was referring explicitly to the IRA's 30 years plus war of attrition against the British state, to the murder of Lord Mountbatten, members of his family, and a young local boat boy off the coast of Sligo in 1979, followed that same day by a second massacre at Warren Point in Coe Down, where 18 soldiers were slaughtered, to the Harrods bomb in 1983 that killed six, to the attempted murder of Margaret Thatcher in 1984 and the Brighton bombing in which five people died, to numerous other atrocities and to the deaths of hundreds of members of the British security forces and of civilians caught up in murderous attacks down those blood-soaked years. During much of that time, as a hugely influential senior executive at the heart of the British newspaper establishment, which was largely united in its condemnation of the IRA, Greenslid was writing under a pseudonym for Infoblact, St. Fine's newspaper. Week after week, its column more news would list dehumanized details of the slaughter of soldiers, police officers and civilians.